Hi everyone, good evening sa inyong lahat. Welcome to O Learn Live. This is our day 16 ng ating 21 day challenge. I'm Jerry Ilo, the founder, co-founder of O Learn, your e-learning platform for SMEs and also Tarki, the automation tool for field employees. Now tonight we will talk about the Philippine startups that are winning amidst COVID-19. Sino sino ba sila? What are what are they doing? Bakit sila namamayagpag? and are uh, kumbaga, doing great during this time of quarantine. So malalaman natin 'yan sa ating uh, guests in ating guests in a while. Um, for those who just came in, please say hi and where are you from sa ating chat box. So yan, comment kayo saan kayo nanonood ngayon. Say hi and where you are watching from in the chat box. Okay, so let me introduce my partner and co-host the chairman of AFI, the founder of Retail Academy, also the direct, a director of BMA and OD consultant, Mr. Eric Kaeg. Hi, Sir Eric. Good evening, Sir Jerry, and good evening to all our viewers tonight. And uh, kamusta po, Sir Jerry? Yeah, okay na okay naman. We had a great discussion kanina sa Union Bank uh, Global yes. Linker na uh, webinar, learning sessions natin. Yes regarding exporting. No? So, yung palang exporting, kahit kayo panahon ng COVID, pwede pa rin ituloy. No? So, yun ang maganda. At uh, binigyan tayo ng idea yung mga basics on how to go about, especially for our MSMEs who are planning to have their products uh, exported abroad. Yes. And actually, nakaka nakakatawa yon because they have uh, they shared uh, several i think pang uh, success stories ng mga clients nila no so possible pala talaga you don't just focus on sa ang city ka sa ang province o dito lang sa Pilipinas but we when you once you have um, export quality products di ba pwede mong ilabas yon sa buong mundo and have the the whole global um, the, the world uh, as your customer Yes. Ang maganda doon sa exporting, it's uh, sabi nila kanina, number one, tax-free. Tapos sabi pa nila, uh, you would earn uh, foreign currency, di ba? So, yes. Uh, <laughs> maganda doon. Yeah, okay. So, si Happy Lin is here watching from Dagupan City. Hi, Happy Lin. Si Marvi Ren from Bukidnon. Hello. Um, we also have Lily from Quezon City. Hello sa inyong lahat. Please say hi and where are you from sa ating chat box para naman yan ma makilala namin kayo. And also, yes, uh, good evening. And si Lily. Uh, and also, uh, please share this broadcast so that more people will be able to watch it. Yan. Um, so Eric, sabi ko nga kanina, mukhang okay yung pag-uusapan natin because maraming mga, with this quarantine, ba? maraming mga businesses, I think many or most businesses were drastically affected by the quarantine. And ayun, I mean, a lot are, are really struggling. Pero merong mga ilan uh, na mga Philippine startups na kumbaga na na gaining grounds and mm -hmm. gaining more customers in this time of quarantine and yan yung pag-uusapan natin this uh, yeah. tonight exciting yan sir Jerry no uh, para naman uh, amidst all of the anxiety and scare especially another announcement this morning maganda baka pakinig naman na mayroong mga positive news uh, from uh, other uh, entrepreneurs and startups Yes, kaya yan, excited akong ma, yan, ma share natin sa kanila kung sino sino yung mga startups na yon, anong ginagawa nila. Um, and yan, before that, yan, batiin muna natin si Bra Brain, ba? Is watching from Cabanatuan. Si uh, Ro Roby is also watching from Cavite naman. Tapos si CJ is here. Si Josie from Quezon City. Hi, Miss Josie. And si, of course, si Kat. Chua, Sir Eric. Ayan. Hi, Ayan, uh, mga... Yes. <laughs> Masugid na taga-subaybay ng ating uh, programa. So, yon for those who just came in, please say hi and where are you from sa ating chat box and also share did this broadcast. Uh, we're just starting uh, out. So, yan, share to your friends so that more people will be able to uh, learn about how 
um, the, the Philippine, how some Philippine startups are winning in this time of quarantine. Mm. And siguro, uh, let's introduce na our guest, Sir Eric. Sige, Sir Jenny, go ahead. Okay, sige. So, ang speaker natin uh, tonight won the Rice Bowl Awards 2019 Startup Founder of the Year for the Philippines. Grabe, bigat. And a he is also a contributor for the Philippine Daily Inquirer. He is a certified industrial engineer and was part of the pioneer batch of Asian Institute of Management's MS Innovation and Business. And he also... Founded and was the first CEO of Gezar Innovations Private Limited. So, yung um, magandang company na he'll, he'll also share later. And today, he is the CEO of Apex Digital Marketing. So, please help me welcome Mr. Edward Solicito. Hi, Edward. Hello, Sir Jerry. Hello, Sir Eric. Uh, hello, innovators. Um, thank you for having me on the show. Good evening, yeah, we're so... uh, Good evening po. Sir Edward, first batch ka pala ng innovation ng AIM. Congratulations. Thank you po. Uh, naitawid natin yung MSIB. Pero um, <laughs> <laughs> masters ng AIM, um, nailusot po natin siya. Awa naman po ng Diyos. And pagsisikap, we have startups na kinalabasan nung pagkagraduate na yan. Yan, galing. Yan, hi. Um, si Ryan from Kainta is here. A stuck daw sa traffic. Si Fres, hello. And si Mary Ang. Yan. So, for those who just came in, please say hi and where are you from sa ating chat box. And also, uh, share did this broadcast para yan, maraming maka matuto tonight. Yes. Um, Edward Siguru, let's start with um, uh, a short background about you before mo i-share itong... Uh, list ng Philippine startups that are winning amidst this COVID-19, which, by the way, was featured in Philippine Daily Inquirer. Mamaya, pakita natin yung screenshot na yon. So, itong list po na isi-share ni uh, Kezar, ay, ni Kezar taloy, ni Edward. <laughs> <laughs> ni Edward is uh, featured in uh, Philippine Daily Inquirer. So, give us a short background about you, um, Edward. Yes, yeah, so yeah, I'm Edward Solicito. I'm... Um... Like um, Sir Jerry said, I'm a graduate of Master of Science in Innovation and Business from AIM. Um, basically, it's a, uh, pag pinapaliwanag namin, parang napaka-high tech nung pangalan, Master of Science in Innovation, innovation. and Business. But basically, it's an MBA specific, it's like an MBA with a specific on, uh, kumbaga, um, it's a focus on business. Pero mm -hmm. kaganda ka niya, it has a focus on the first part of the business. Doon sa ideation process, market research, idea mm -hmm. uh, validation, prototyping, valuation ng company. Yan ang mga importante sa atin, which yun yung binubuo ng MSIB program. I'm also a certified industrial engineer um, by trade. I graduated from Faith Colleges in Batangas. So uh, matagal po akong Batanggenyo. Um, ang kagandahan doon with an industrial engineering background, medyo sanay ka na sa prototyping process. So nandiyan na yung okay lang sa'yo kung hindi okay yung first prototype. Ang okay lang sa'yo kung hindi pa okay, hindi gusto yung tama yung price point mo, makakarating ka din doon. Ang importante is you have progress with every iteration of your product. And that helped me a lot. Um, after that, I became the first CEO. I was the I am the founder of Kazar um, Innovations, PTLTD. Um, kasama namin yung Kazar 3D, one of the largest 3D printing startups in the Philippines. Um, Ang um, iterations, mabilis lang, may prototype ka na. We have Kazar Atlas also, Study Play, and of course, Tracaro. Right now, I'm um, currently working in the digital marketing space. Yan ang pinagkakaabalahan ko po ngayon. Kasi alam natin, the future is all online. Everyone's gonna be, everything's gonna be digitalized in the future. Ang importante is you have your own digital branding. So, yun po ngayon yung ginagawa, uh, ginagawa ko po ngayon. I'm... Uh, ginagabay, ginagabayan ko po yung mga startups and others, large and small businesses, kung ano yung kailangan nilang gawin para magkaroon sila ng uh, valuable na digital brand. Yan, ang galing, ang galing. Um, so, um, with that, actually, you compiled a list of kumbaga, mga startups na winning in this COVID-19. And that was actually featured sa Manila Bulletin. Tingnan, i-pull up ko lang to. Um, they inquire, sir. They inquire. Ay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> inquire, no? Wala-wala na ako. Yan. So, um, 
you know, cover lang. But uh, it's it's uh, featured in Daily Inquirer last April 17. So, ilang startups ang feature mo dito? I featured six, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, six startups. Six All startups. Yes, yes. Okay, sige. So, um, we'll give you the floor to share the uh, what are who are those startups. And yan, uh, para ma-enlighten yung mga viewers natin. Si Grover pala is here from uh, Singapore, our uh, partner, KFS Solutions. Uh, sa Union Bank din, Sir Eric. Uh, client natin, client niya nila sa Union Bank. Hi, Grover. Thank you for watching. Ayan. Tapos si um, Tina and Jen, si Jer- oh, Jerilyn Reyes. Ayan. And habol din si Mark. Yun. So, please share this broadcast. People are coming in. So, please say hi and where are you from and then share this broadcast so that more people will be able to watch it. Okay. Sige. So, Edward will give you the, the floor to share sino-sino yung mga startups na yun. Yeah. Thank you, Sir Jerry. Again, there is, uh, thank you, Sir Eric. Um, and thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for inviting me in the show. Again, I'm Edward Solicito. I am one of the contributors for Philippine Daily Inquirer and the ASEAN Rice Bowl Startup Awards Founder of the Year. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, I'm going to share about the Philippine, how the Philippine startup community handles the great equalizer. So ang tanong is, what is the great equalizer? So this is how often people often describe the coronavirus or COVID-19 that is sweeping across the world. The virus, yung COVID, doesn't care if someone is rich or poor, famous or unknown, powerful or powerless. Um, lahat nasa panganib. Everyone is in danger. Here in the Philippines, um, yung huli natin bilang, we have over 6,500 infected individuals and there are no signs that it will stop soon. That said, yung kagandahan yan, we now know that this it, it, its impact can be mitigated. According to the WHO, it may be the first pandemic in history that we can control and that the citizens' survival depends on their government's response, so each individual's company's response, its leadership, and its adaptability to this unprecedented crisis. Um, I got the inspiration um, to write this article for the Philippine Daily Inquirer because of that fact and because the situation is real for our businesses and corporations. Um, here in the Philippines, uh, COVID-19 pushed companies to do things they haven't done before, considering the lockdowns of some major cities and the lack of transportation and logistic services. The first question uh, on a lot of these companies' mind, how can we transfer our operations online as soon as possible? Or is even possible at all? But the reality is not all companies are prepared. Um, even the large traditional businesses, hundreds of companies already closed down. Daming nawala ng trabaho, resulting to thousands of Filipinos being laid off. Um, considering the ECQ has been extended, yun nga yung nabanggit ni Sir uh, Eric kanina, uh, mas marami pa yung inaasahan natin ng mga kumpanya na magsasara at mga mawawala ng trabaho. COVID-19 serves as a wake-up call for startups and businesses. Before COVID, a lot of these businesses are saying we are prepared for the fourth industrial revolution. We now see that you're not. Uh, we, sinasabi na iba, we are an essential brand. No one is even searching you on Google right now. And we know that some startups had been pitching, invest in us because we are the future. When you are not even operating in the present. So to everyone listening and to everyone watching, this is your wake-up call. If something trivial, just like um, transportation, um, halt lahat ng transportation, wala munang public transportation, if it disrupts your business, then it's not something that is future-proof. You have to accept that something has changed. We Filipino startups and Filipino businesses are resilient, yes, but we were not prepared for COVID-19. Ito na. Fortunately, some companies had the foresight to invest heavily in digitalization. It now is ripping its rewards. They were not surprised. This is just but a minor inconvenience for them. A lot of people ask, ito talaga yung tanong, um, bakit ko pigili tong startups na to? Why I've chosen the startups to be featured on my article? It's because they come from different industries. And I want uh, my readers to and my listeners 
to have an idea on how they can also win. So yun po yung kagandahan ng mga kasama natin nanonood ngayon. Kahit sa ang industry ka pumasok, baka meron kang paglagyan dito. And hopefully, these startups serve as an inspiration or a guide to your own startup. Um, if there are any startups that I missed, um, most probably meron akong mga na-miss. May mga nag-chat sa akin, Edward, bakit wala ako dyan? Please comment na lang sa baba para we can reach them out and maybe create a new article for them and then we can feature them on some articles. Um, ito na po yung mga startups na pinili natin na gusto namin ma-feature at gusto namin maging boost ng confidence ng lahat po ng startups na nakikinig. Um, let's start with the first one. We have a social mobile application. We have Kumu. So Kumu is the fastest growing social app and largest um, live stream platform built by in for Filipinos with over 3 million registered users and tens of thousands of live streamers making an income by connecting to their audience. So ang in-interview ko dito is si Roland Ross. Um, the app has grown significantly beyond 3 million users who are tuning into Kumu to connect and engage with each other. Nung nagkakituan po kami ni, Ro, um, ni Roland about this, the idea is it's so Filipino. The idea is the application is so Filipino na matik na na mahatak mo one is the Filipinos here in the Philippines, uh, in, in the Philippines, and those OFWs outside. Imagine niyo po yung naging setup nila. They want to have connections. They have the o they want the OFWs to feel that they are connected with the Filipinos here in our country. Saan sila sumakto ngayon when it comes to digitalization, when it comes to sorry, when it comes to COVID-19. Hirap na hirap tayo ngayon, mag, hindi tayo magkakasama, magkakahiwalay po tayo ngayon. So kung meron ka na agad idea that intends to connect individuals in such a way na hindi nagagawa ni Facebook, hindi nagagawa na ibang social media platform, doon ka mananalo. And that's the reason why Kumu is playing uh, is winning right now. Kumu's install base increased by 67%, making it one of the largest Filipino communities online. So you can visit Kumu at kumu.ph. Dito tayo sa sunod. Iba naman pong industry. We have Bukid Fresh. Ito isa sa mga paborito ko. Bukid Fresh is an online farmer's market providing top quality fresh and healthy food at fair prices at the same time helping in the uh, um, helping the environment. Ganito na po yung brand nila before pa mag-start yung COVID. Ngayong panahon na hinahanap natin na magkaroon ng time na makakuha ng fresh produce, magkaroon ng Pilipino, maka, mag, magkaroon, magkaroon ng digital version ng pamamalengke, nandun na sila. So ngayong nagkaroon po tayo ng COVID, nakahain na sila, nandyan na agad sila. They help a lot of Filipinos stay healthy and safe by supplying their weekly requirement of fresh fruits and vegetables at the comfort of their homes. Um, Co-founder Aiden David um, said that their current situation exposed a lot of gaps and inefficiencies in both the private and public sector. Um, though he explained that as an online market, Bukid Fresh is doing great because of the demand for food deliveries resulting to their orders increasing by 530%. Even if the lockdown does disrupt the shipments for some of their products, hindi sila nagulat. They in the na magkakaroon sila ng increase ng ganito. Ang ginawa nilang ni Bukid Fresh is they increase their capacity to make sure that a lot more people can enjoy their services. Na kailangan kailangan naman po talaga po ngayon. So uh, you can see, uh, you can visit uh, Bukid Fresh um, at bukidfresh.ph. Uh, sabihin niyo po na ako po yung napapunta para masendan din nila ako ng kanilang mga paninda. At masendan din nila si Sir Jerry at si Sir Eric. Yung pangatlo po natin is To The Top. Uh, to The Top is one of the newest brands dito na naisama. Um, the good thing is yung um, uh, founder po nito, Mr. Magusara, has a new play and a novel idea when it comes to digital marketing. They're one of the few digital marketing startups that guarantees results. Guarantees marketing results. So To The Top, is data driven is a data driven digital marketing agency that focuses on mark, uh, maximizing their clients ROI and website performance using our uh, their unique approach to search engine optimization according to to the top founder Marvin Magusara nung na interview ko siya due to the coronavirus outbreak and the community quarantine rules 
a lot of people are just inside their houses browsing the web, <laughs> resulting to a significant increase on their clients' website traffic. These are the kinds of people that matagal na nilang nakita to the top as an SEO agency, as a digital marketing agency. Matagal na nilang nakita. They saw it way before na the future is just online. Everyone's just gonna be on houses, even our jobs, even our works, even our responsibilities, everything will be online. And the way that they tackle their um, their clients and their proposals is promise ko makikita kayo ng kahit sinong kliyente online. Hindi na sila mahihirapan. Pag sinurch nila kayo sa Google, kayo na agad yung lalabas. So sila agad yung nauna. Um, Magusara gave an example nung nagkwentuhan kami. One of their clients, Teaching Guide, so you can search at teachingguide.com, a platform that provides competitive information for online instructions, um, has seen a 125% increase in organic traffic, organic traffic over March. 125% increase. Kung babayaran mo yun sa Google, that's gonna cost a lot. But because of the data-driven approach to the top, and they know for a fact that they can guarantee results, they actually found out, they actually made this pla their platform, teachingguide.com, to increase by 125%. That's the reason why they are included in the list. They are not just helping themselves as a company um, reach a lot more people, they're actually helping their clients. So kudos to, to the top. Um, you can visit them at to the top that agency. So medyo weird yung kanilang ano, uh, website. So ma madali nyo makakalimutan. You can remember it easily to the top that agency. Um, also, uh, uh, Marvin uh, is a good friend of mine. So he gave away a free ebook to all of the older um, audience right now that is uh, watching. You can search it at www.gatekeeperhq.com slash guide to contract management for COVID-19. Namimigay sila ngayon ng free ebook para sa mga kasama natin kasi sinabi ko sa kanila that the audience here are all business owners so might as well have a free ebook na may templates na for contract management. Sa inyo po yan. Again, search nyo lang po yung Gatekeeper HQ. Isa sa mga kaibigan po nila. The next one is something na familiar po kayong lahat ng nanonood. Um, O-Learn. O-Learn is a technology-powered training and consulting company that helps small and medium enterprises in the Philippines to grow and become world-class companies. O-Learn de develop different online courses that companies can use to train their employees. Dati po napag-usapan na po namin to ni Sir Jerry. Kapag ang startup mo, kapag yung business mo is helping other people grow their capacity, grow their capacity to make more money on their businesses or um, increasing their capacity of their competencies of their individuals, lamang ka na. Siguradong kukuhanin ka. Lalo na ngayon. Uh, bakit lalo na po ngayon? Napag-usapan po namin ito ni Sir Jerry. According to Oler and co-founder Jerry Ilaw, na kilalang kilala nyo, the quarantine health push the acceptance of e-learning in the Philippines because of the quarantine. Many people have doubts about whether e-learning is the way to go. Um, Mr. Jerry Ilo believes that this is, it is different now, saying that since everyone is forced to work from home and learn online, they have become much, much, much more open to the idea of implementing e-learning to their companies. Let's get it out there. There's basically no way to do person-to-person um, trainings right now. The good thing about O-Learn is hindi sila yung mga ibang nagagawa ngayon na e-learning na ah, gawa tayo ng e-learning kasi dati tayo ginagawa natin face-to-face. -face. Matagal na pong nagsiset up si, e si O-Learn na papunta talaga dito sa digitalization. Matagal, they, are, they have been, um, it's been uh, months nung napag-usapan namin that they have been setting it up na magkaroon ng e-learning modules, e-learning um, trainings just like this one. Katulad ng mga napapanood niyo po ngayon. Again, the idea is hindi sila nagulat kaya tuloy na tuloy pa rin po yung kanilang production ngayon. Tuloy-tuloy pa rin yung kanilang pakikipag-usap sa mga clients and that's the reason why they're winning online. Prepared na sila. Hindi po nakikita niya naman po ngayon. Very free. Ito po sa isang mga binibigay ni Oler ng libro sa lahat ng nanonood. Mataas yung quality ng production. Yan po yung mga hindi nyo mahanap sa iba, nakakasimula pa lang. Lamang pa rin po talaga yung nag-prepare for the digitalization, for the, the prepare for digitalization. Una pa rin sila, experience matters. Let's go for the last two. Um, Bridge360, this is one of the startups um, that is very close to my heart. 
Um, Bridge 360 kasi is a social tech enterprise that primarily assists NGOs, SMEs, and startups to adapt to the digital transformation of society and social and environmental concern challenges. Bridge 360, uh, Bridge 360 developed a news aggregator software, COVID-19, apps aggregator, um, case dashboards, and citizens patrol. Lahat po yan. You, uh, you can follow Bridge 360 to find out all of those tech um, that they've already churned out for the COVID-19 situation. Um, they're currently, virtu- um, sabi sa akin ni CEO nila, Rage Gonzalez, um, they're currently developing a virtual triage right now to match patients with hospitals. Yun yung kailangan natin. Um, according to um, Rage, uh, Rage Gonzalez, their CEO of Bridge, the CEO of Bridge 360, um, the, quarantine, the quarantine had given them another chance to help and justify the need for their platform. Um, similar to the Dadaal the, the, the volcano eruption, matagal na po silang tumutulong si Bridge 360. Um, Gonzalez, Rage, um, emphasized that more than the amount of research and due information that they are receiving, it is the opportunity to help the Bridge 360 sees as an up. Uh, as an upside that's the reason why i included it on them on my list they have been setting up the process of creating technology for disasters such as this one before covid 19 existed even before yung taal volcano eruption natin na nangyari lang last february parang ang tagal na nun, no january february nagkataal volcano eruption po tayo at ngayon po covid naman yung hinaharap natin even before then, na start na nagawa na nila na, nagawa na ng Bridge 360 yung framework to actually create rapid prototypes, rapid turn out rapid versions of their technology that would help a lot of people, primarily the NGOs. Na kailangan kailangan talaga ng support ng ayon ng ating mga startups. Kagandahan dito is yung dalawang magkasunod na disasters draw very unfortunate. It gives Bridge 360 the experience, the learnings, and the basically the trial period na kailangan nila. Uh, na, na, kailangan nila na supposedly matagal mo yung gagawin. Pero ngayon dahil magkakasunod, unfortunately. Pero at least nakukuha nila lahat ng information para next time mas prepared na po tayo. So tulong yan ng, of course ng Bridge 360. So kudos to Bridge 360. Yung last po natin is a startup called Jungle. So Jungle is a fully digital buy now and pay later app that enables consumers to pay their their purchase online or in store um, in fixed monthly installments without a need for a credit card. So they are an e-commerce play. Um, founder nito is si Mr. Alfred Cardenas um, said that the quarantine, quarantine enabled them to push their online buy now and pay later services ahead of schedule um, to be used for their users at this now needed the most. Matagal na po nilang nire-ready yung buy now and pay later system nila. Ngayon, kailangan-kailangan ng users nila, excuse me, na ikasa na po nila agad yan at isa yan sa mga features na nakaabang na po agad kay Jungle. Um, Sorry about that. But when it comes to Jungle, they're one of the best e-commerce place out there. So gusto ko po na sana ma-check nyo po sila. Ang goal po talaga nila is mas marami po yung matulungan po natin ngayon. Alam naman po natin na e-commerce play is very big right now. Pero yung financing, um, yung institutional um, financing, yung para sa mga masa talaga, uh, yung mass adaptation nito wala pa. So that's the reason why apps like Jungle are winning right now. Sila ngayon yung pumupuna, uh, pumupuno dun sa kakulangan ninyo ng traditional banks. So, we have Jungle. Um, unfortunately, um, Cardenas also believes that the startup financing will change, um, saying that fundraising, this is for startups, um, fundraising will be tougher than ever, um, but this means only the best ideas will be backing, uh, will get the backing of intelligent investors and VCs. Um, you can visit Jungle at heyjungle.com. So, yung po yung anim. Anim na startups na nilagay ko po dun sa aking list. Um, and they're really winning right now. Ngayon, tinanong ko sila, uh, sabi ko sa kanila, I have a lot of um, uh, readers na makakabasa nito. Um, ay, meron tayong mga kasama ngayon na nanonood at nakikinig. Ano ba yung uh, magiging words of encouragement or suggestions nila? Ito, very important to. Ano yung suggestions nila sa mga startups na nandyan or mga businesses na nandyan? Kumu CEO. Ito, na-excite tayo kay Kumu. Kumu CEO Roland Rose noted that 
revenue multiples are going to be lower. So ano po yung rev- revenue multiples? Yung po kasi yung valuation ngayon ng companies. Uh, pa- paano mo makuha yung re- um, value ng isang kumpanya, particular na startup? Usually may tinatawag po tayo na revenue multiplier. So ngayon, sure tayo na bababa po yun. Ibig sabihin po ng revenue multiplier, kung magkano po yung kinikita mo, ita times mo doon sa revenue multiplier, doon mo malalaman ngayon yung value ng business mo. Ngayon po, yung revenue multiplier according to CEO Roland Ross of Kumu are going to be lower. For example, um, so you should be very prepared. Uh, plan B isn't good enough. Make sure that you are thinking through the worst case scenarios of your business because we are practically there right now. This is basically, a, a, in reality, this is a nightmare. Hindi natin naisip na there's this one sickness. Boom! Tapos na, sarado na agad lahat ng shop, sarado na lahat. This is the worst ca- one of the worst case scenarios. At kaya hindi pwede na plan B lang po tayo. Rage Gonzalez uh, from Bridge360 reminds us that Filipino startups should be helping each other right now, especially in these trying times. Sino pa po ba magtutulungan? That's the reason why nagpapasalamat po kami kay Sir Jerry, kay Sir Eric, na they're giving their time para magkaroon nga ng mga gayetong shows para mas mabilis yung communication sa atin. Direct dun sa mga makakatulong talaga. Direct dun sa mga nangangailangan ng additional information ngayon. Um, to the top, Marvin Magusara, um, say that startups should take this time to have your entire team reassess the process and goals of your company, especially since everything is at a pause right now. Um, ito po yung gusto ko pong, um, na, gusto ko pong masabi dun sa lahat mo nang nakikinig po ngayon. Sana, pero mas malamang na hindi na po ito mangyayari ulit. Na magkakaroon tayo ng pause when it comes to our economy. Well, fingers crossed, sana hindi na ito maulit. So hopefully this doesn't um, repeat itself again. Hopefully which we're gonna be much more smarter when it comes to assessing these kinds of things. But this is the perfect time for a retreat. Kumbaga, this is a perfect time according to Marvin Magusara, which is a digital marketing expert. He's been doing this outside of the Philippines and now in the Philippines. They're telling me the idea is take your team together. Sabihin natin sa kanila na, yes, everything's at a pause right now. What should we do moving forward? Because this will end. This will end. Hopefully sooner rather than later, but this will end. At ang kagandahan dyan is your startup comes out of COVID-19 much stronger or even the very least much more organized than before. Hindi na pwede yung basta-basta na lang. Nagkaroon tayo ng dalawang buwan na nagpahinga. Ang tanong, ano pang ginawa ng startup nyo during that time? Hopefully something productive para mas lalo kayong maging organized at mas malaki maging value ng startup nyo. Lastly, um, Bukid Fresh co-founder sums it up with the essential things that everyone should do right now. Um, take care and stay safe. Uh, so yun po, yung aking pong part when it comes to um, the article that I built, uh, that I write, I, that I wrote. Um, there's some articles that are coming down in the, uh, coming out in the future. Hopefully po mabasa nyo din po. At hopefully mapag-usapan natin eh, dito sa Older Live or some other um, show po na meron tayo dito sa Older Family. Sir Jerry, Sir Eric, Yan, grabe. So, na-inspire ako doon sa mga yes. startups na yon. And actually... Uh, thank you very much. Thank you po. Yeah. So, And, yeah, actually, yung mga ibang mga startups noon, so, nag-order kami sa kanila <laughs> or ginagamit namin. Like, yes, si Bukid Fresh, you mentioned about Bukid Fresh. So, currently, yan, uh, laking tulong talaga ni Bukid Fresh. Um sa mga Eric, fresh foods. So, doon kami nag-order. Uh, so, Eric, uh, may problema yung audio? I think may problema ang audio ni Sir Eric. But, uh, just to summarize ulit yung mga, yung mga na-share mo, no? so, si Kumo, uh, the, you shared about Kumo is the live streaming app that is very becoming very, very popular nowadays. So, maraming nagkukumo. Um, the second one is uh, Bukid Fresh, which uh, sells mga fresh produce. Um, the third one is To The Top, uh, which is a digital marketing um, agency, right? Um, and then the fourth one, yeah, thank you so much. We're very privileged to have uh, learn part of the list. Um, and then 
Also, the fifth one is the Bridge 360, which is a social tech enterprise. And then the last one is Jungle, which is uh, e-com payment and financing. Yes. So, yes. yan, ang daming, ang daming uh, yung mga companies na yon, startups are really, uh, kumbaga, uh, great inspiration para sa mga businesses na, kumbaga, yan, nag, 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 finding their way uh, on how to navigate this COVID-19 uh, quarantine. Yeah, actually, Sir Jerry, more than the startup being served as an inspiration for other startups, sana maging inspiration siya with the large companies, the much more traditional ones, the much more established ones. Kasi if this startups na tayo-tayo lang yung mga bata, like mm-hmm. uh, very young ones yung mga tayo, mga bata naman po tayo lahat dito. So the young ones are, kumbaga, the very limited yung, very limited yung resources natin was able to jump in, in and mm-hmm. to handle COVID-19 as, efficient, as efficiently as these guys, yung naisama natin sa yeah. stats. Kaya dapat nila. Um, kaya mas maganda na, kumbaga, kung more than the startups in itself, yung malalaking kumpanya na inaasahan ng mas maraming Filipino, sana magkaroon din sila ng mindset na ganito. Yes, totally agree. Um, with, the, with the six startups and also the other startups that you're familiar with na who are doing well in this quarantine, meron ko bang mga napansin ng mga characteristics nila? Ano yung meron sila na that probably makes them stand out and also handle this quarantine better than other startups? Well, the thing kasi is they didn't see the when I'm talking to them, they basically had plans na. Now, what if something happened? Of course, they didn't know. Um, they didn't know that this will happen as it is na COVID-19 yung magiging ganong transition. But they were always prepared that if something happens, they can still ride out the wave. Um, kaya ko po siya nasabi is there's a, there's a sense of confidence for their founders. Madalas nating naririnig yan eh. Usually, all, everything in a startup, it all boils down with the founders din eh. Sa totoo lang, with the mm, founders, yeah. with the executives. Kayo kasi yung leadership ng company eh. If you're confident, mm. your people are confident. Hindi sila natakot. Mas inabangan nila, okay, COVID-19 shuts down the entire Philippine ecosystem. What, how can we actually get the most out of this situation? Our customers has been locked into their homes. Fortunately, we are those, they realize that they are those start, startups that already have a digital play. So might as well, okay, wala yung iba. Wala yung iba. Yung mga traditional businesses, wala silang magagawa ngayon. Hindi sila prepared. Tayo prepared tayo kahit maliit tayo. That confidence that each and every um, founder and executive manager that is within their business, I think yun talaga po yun. Wala akong nakausap sa kanila na parang hindi na po namin alam yung gagawin, ma- hmm. that feeling namin hindi na po aabot. Hindi to mayayaman. Ha? These are not the big, the Ayala startups of the world. Hindi sila yung mga ganon. These are people who are, kumbaga, normal Filipinos talaga sila, normal startup founders just like each and every one of us, lalo na nung mga nanonood. And that's great na nakaka, nakatalon po sila ngayon. Confidence, I guess, and preparedness. Mayarap naman din po kasi mm-hmm. maging confident kapag hindi ka talaga prepared at nagulat ka talaga. <laughs> yeah, and I think isa din sa mga ano, uh, you, you kept on mentioning kanina is parang foresight, no? Foresight for these founders na kumbaga dito papunta yung dito papunta yung market or this is going to be the future. And normally itong mga na mention mo, they are really pioneering the the kumbaga they are pioneers in their own rights dito sa, sa mga industries na ginagalawa nila. And I remember a uh, Canadian ice hockey player na si Wayne Gretz. Um, is prob- is fam- very famous on what he said na I skate not where the puck is, but where it will be. So, yes. kung baga, uh, itong nangyayari ngayon, oo, pero ang bet niya is saan papunta. Saan papunta yung market, saan papunta yung uh, customers and dun siya nagbibet. He skates where the puck will be, not where it is current, uh, not where uh, the puck currently is. So, yeah. Sir Eddie, kumustang on yeah, your mark? Yeah, sir. Yeah, uh, can you hear me? Ayun. Me? Yes. Hey. <laughs> okay. Uh, kanina, sina, Sir Jerry, may sinabi Sir Eddie, no? sabi niya, uh, some founders are 
uh, future proofing uh, their enterprises however some are not present <laughs> okay may may tan- may inquiry lang uh, do, you, do you think for for those who have not yet kumbaga uh, kumbaga they were not they're they're late bottom line is while during the quarantine period while undergoing all of these is it advisable for those who are not yet into the startup or into the tech or digital to use this period as something that they can actually start now? Well, kaya ba? Well, in all honesty, it's gonna be so hard. I would advise na hindi na muna. The objective, if you're too late, um, if you're too late to this happening, wala na tayong magagawa. Might as well just wait it out and make sure na you'll survive. That's the first and uh, foremost um, importance right now, that your company survives. Kasi may mga empleyado kayo na umaasikas, uma, umaasa na magsusurvive yung company nyo. Hindi ngayon yung panahon na late na tayo. Hindi, sige, ngayon tayo gumawa ng digital platform, saktong-sakto. Wala, mahirap ang kayong kumuha ng programmers. Wala kayong mahatak na digital people ngayon. Lahat is naka, naka-quarantine. Hindi natin yan magagawa ngayon. It's too late, to be completely honest. That being said, Sir Eric, now is the time to plan. Now is the time to um, uh, collect your people. This happened to us once. This is no. This happened to us now. This is happening to us now. Dapat hindi na to mangyari ulit. There's definitely gonna be another pandemic in the future. Hindi naman yung tanong ng when eh. It's gonna be happening again in the future. Uh, your goal as a company is to survive all of those pandemics and all of those disasters. Lalo na dito sa Pilipinas, lagi tayong may, may lagi tayong disaster dahil nga sa geography natin. And it's the goal ngayon to be prepared. Ngayon lang naging extreme na sinarado talaga natin ngayon yung buong industriya. Uh, it now is the time Sir Eric to prepare to uh, to admit to your team na hindi tayo prepared sa COVID pandemic. Hindi tayo prepared. Dapat aminin yun ng mga founders right now and mag magkasama-sama sila. Okay, what's the plan now? After na after mm-hmm. ng COVID, ano yung sudod natin gagawin? So that during this time, they'll just survive together, make sure na meron silang kumpanyang uuwian, uh, babalikan, at pagbalik nila, mas inspired sila ngayon na gawin agad yung digitalization. Dati kasi Sir Jerry, Sir Eric, tiyatanong nila, para saan ba yung digitalization? Hindi naman namin kailangan mag-slack, lagi namang nandito sa opisina yan. Ayan na. <laughs> ito na mismo yun. So ito po yung sinasabi namin, kaya kailangan yung magkaroon ng digital backbone. Yan po yun. Ito po yung example. Uh, so next time, wag na po natin ulitin na magkaganito. At least ngayon, meron na tayong case study dun sa mga lumamang yung mga handa sa hindi. So magandang tip yun, no, Sir Edwin, for our viewers. Kasi ngayon, sabi nga ni Sir Jerry, uh, this uh, COVID-19 pushed so many people to the digital world. And uh, somehow they're trying to, you know, uh, yung sinasabi na, oh, maglagay kayo ng continuity plan. And uh, most of them will jump into the bandwagon without actually collecting first what they need. So maganda, maganda yung tip mo. Thank you very much. Thank you din po. Yan. Si, sabi ni Mark, uh, let's embrace digitalization. <laughs> yan, tama yan, Mark. Yes. Um, siguro to share more perspective then uh, about O-Learn since part of the part of the list is all learn so we've been promoting actually i've been promoting online learning since i think 2016 and during that time it was a ha- yeah 2016 tanda mo siguro yun, sir eric so um mahirap iilan pa lang mostly yung mga OFWs uh, yun yung nakakausap ko dati kadalasa th- that time and they they are the ones who are more more keen on learning online dahil nga nasa labas sila ng bansa eh. But here sa Pilipinas sobrang hirap and um, since then we've been building our learning management system. Uh, soon we'll launch it. Uh, we, uh, I, I think I mentioned it last time. Maraming ginagawa po na mga digital forums si O-Learn like this one. We've done I think close to 60 since the quarantine. <laughs> So, ang daming learnings doon, ang daming matututunan. Yeah, for one month. So, practically parang two a day in essence. So, maraming mga, mga golden nuggets doon that our viewers can learn. And what we want to do is to house everything sa O-Learn app. 
Uh, we hope to launch it next week kasi pag tiningnan mo yung Facebook page namin, sobrang puno ang hirap balikan yung mga sessions one month ago. Natabunan na yan ng post. But we hope na we can launch it, uh, we can house it sa Olearn app, hopefully by next week. And yan, isi-share namin yan. Nandun listahan lahat ng Olearn Live, lahat ng sessions ng PMA, lahat ng sessions ng AFI, lahat ng sessions ng Bounce Pack. So yan, uh, that that's gonna be that's one of the things that we will do next week. So hopefully yan, lumabas na. And that's the um, reason kaya kasama kayo dun sa list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, imagine, sir, actually, Sir Jerry, imagine nyo, some people are gonna be starting their e-learning platform ngayon. Ngayon pa lang sila magharap ng camera. So hindi, yeah. <laughs> hindi talaga siya prepared. That's the reason kaya una talaga yung prepared. Yes, tama. Totally agree. Um, si J. Chris Christra, uh, may tanong siya, what are the actionable steps daw can, uh, that a local startups can do uh, or should be doing to pivot their strategy from this crisis? Well, when it comes to the action, when it comes to pivot, kasi um, this is very unprecedented. Eh. I think it goes even deeper than ano ba yung price point natin? Ano ba yung price point ng business? Paano ba natin ito ibebenta? Um, we know for a fact kasi that every startup, how big or how, even how big or how small, they would have to pivot in some way or another during this next couple of months. People will be, their money, the economy is super down right now. That means that their the buying power of people are very small. So we're gonna be competing. Imagine nyo yung mga startups po, we're gonna be competing with bread with vegetables, with fruits. Kasi yun pa lang yung essentials na kailangan natin labanan po ngayon eh. So kapag sinagot natin na what are the actionable steps, basically, start from the beginning. Have your main master planning. Revise your entire master plan from scratch. Because everything is different right now. This is a different earth that will be landing on. If you have a master plan, if your company has a master plan, plan Post-COVID-19, lamang na kayo dun sa ibang startups na nandyan sa labas. Kasi mas marami ngayon yung startups na mawawala. Startups na nagulat sila. Startups na mawawala ng plano. Pero if you're that startup that has a master plan after this COVID-19 situation, you're gonna be one of those people na would be benefiting from the new kinds of assessment. Kasi dito mo malalaman, ito na yung bagong identity it, ng market ngayon. Ito na yung bagong persona ng mga bibili at mga kakausapin ko. Mas malaki ngayon yung chances mo to actually get a small piece of that pie. Yes. Um, in fact, if, if I may share, ka, kausap ko kahap, kagabi yung uh, kaibigan natin, Sir Eric, si Miss Mice. Uh, he's, he's in, uh, she's into events and Event. as we know, di ba ngayon, sobrang hirap ng events. Uh, yes. business as in down. Tapos, nag-usap kami kagabi, uh, I was sharing my thoughts on saan na ba papunta yung events, etc. And sabi ko sa kanya, Mais, baka you might be, ano, uh, you don't know it, but this is probably one of the greatest opportunities ngayon. And you might have more than what you can handle. <laughs> pag pag nag-maneuver mo ng tama to, uh, yeah, you, you might be you might have more than what you can handle. And siguro dun sa mga dun sa mga startups din na yan hirap. I think maganda yung sinabi ni Edward na make sure na ano, to accept the fact na ito na yung new normal and then um, after that you you plan. You you think of how you can survive this uh, crisis better, diba? bigger, and para, para probably bolder, etc. So, um, as, as entrepreneurs, yun yung ano natin eh, yun yung characteristics natin, that's what makes us uh, entrepreneurs, that's what separates us from everyone else. Yeah, uh, dagdag ko lang, uh, actually, I mean, alam mo, way back in twenty sixteen. Sir Jerry was actually convincing me already to do one of the modules. Sir Jerry, na alam mo no? uh, Yes. He went to my office. Uh, he filled me for an hour. And honestly, and I'll be very frank tonight, no. Uh, ako yung isa doon sa nahirapan mag uh, adapt because uh, I'm so used to doing face-to-face -face trainings. So Jerry even had to put people at the back of the camera for me to be able to communicate because. 
it's really a different environment uh, when you're online. And the user experience as far as the, the audience uh, here in digital and face-to-face, wala kang ano dito eh, wala kang ma-adlib because the, 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 the audience is not in front of you. They're in front of you, but they're, they're somewhere else, no? Uh, not unlike when you're, when you're face-to-face. So, fast forward uh, three years after or four years after 2020. <laughs> and uh, ito na si pandemic. And uh, yeah, here we are. Here I am with Sir Jerry. You know, so sabi ko, tama si Sir Jerry. You know, no. <laughs> so, visionaries <laughs> like him. Yun yung sinasabi mo kanina. That's why your list in uh, your PBI article, uh, the, that's why they're called visionaries. They, 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 they see something that we don't. And uh, somehow, when something hits, you know, it, it proves them, it proves them right. Not because you're 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 with us here today, but I guess you know, uh, way back when you were, you know, really uh, introducing this, uh, you know, it was a bit difficult. At least ngayon with the learn live, maybe na practice na yon. Yeah, and salamat, salamat, Sir Eric. And if I may share more examples, siguro, uh, given that yun, we're, we're talking about these things. So one of the first na, na ginawa siguro ni O-Learn, uh, I believe in, in, in the Philippines, is one of the, uh, where we introduced the first ever virtual business summit last March yes. 3 and 4. Yes. Diba, yes. Sir Eric? So um, it was a, a big feat for us kasi yung bago siya. But um, yeah, si Jester is watching. Uh, thank you so much, Jester. Siyempre, uh, with my team, we cannot do it. So, yan, isa yan sa, sa talagang assets ko, si Jester, uh, who've been yes, really uh, very hardworking and helping O-Learn uh, kasama si Nahaina and the rest of the team. So, um, anyway, we, we had our first ever virtual business summit. And during that time, we have no clue, Sir Eric, that this will happen. <laughs> diba? Oh, no. So, grabe diba? siya. Yes. And and now people are calling people are calling me asking me uh, can you help us with the virtual summit etc and then I go ah, okay okay I can do it because we've been through it uh, alam ko kung, kung paano siya paano siya set up etc so I guess yun yung ano eh um I I mentioned uh in in one of the uh web anian forums as well na ako I believe that if you don't make yourself obsolete somebody else will okay yes. so if you don't make yourself obsolete uh, somebody else will that 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 happened to ton nokia they didn't make themselves obsolete and apple did so <laughs> kung ganon uh, it's, it's, it's a big challenge sinatawag nga na it's a innovators dilemma ni um clay christensen ng, ng harvard it's really uh, very hard for you to 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 make yourself obsolete because, syempre, nandun yung pride, nandun yung masakit, baby mo yan, etc. But you have to do it. Because otherwise, your competitors will do it for you. And by that time, wala na, iiyak ka na lang. So, Jerry, matanong ko na, Sir Edwin. No? You, you mentioned earlier, uh, Industrial Revolution 4.0. Now, with this pandemic that hit the globe, paano na si IR 4.0? I mean, are we gonna see IR 5.0 again, or how is it gonna transform? Uh, honestly, uh, inter- industrial revolution 4.0 would be com- we're coming out will be coming out stronger than before after na after the COVID nineteen. The reason with that is a lot of the technologies that IR 4.0 introduces. Ito yung mga t- laging parang uh, pag pinag-uusapan natin is parang mga dream projects lang eh. Ito yung mga pag pinag-uusapan po natin is parang, okay, okay and aspirational yan. That, those are good aspirational projects, pero that's for the future. That's for the time na nobody's coming outside of the house. Like this, yes. like COVID-19 situation. So the idea is, I think, the reason why I think it's gonna come out stronger, the push for IR 4.0 right now, is because it's so easy to pull out an example of why IR 4.0 would be a necessity or preparing for IR 4.0 is a necessity. If every one of us has is an IR 4.0 company right now, I don't think we would having this problem anymore. 
it's just business as usual. Everyone's just in the house. All of our monitors are connected to our machines. Our machines are doing all of the metrics for themselves. All of those things, all of the sensors that we have um, to expedite um, information tracking, all of the metrics are all going to be digitalized. Those are the things that, yun yung pangarap natin ngayon. That's what we are needing right now. So I think more than being halted or just making it obsolete, it's gonna become a stronger case for industrial revolution 4.0. And the good thing, uh, good thing about this is if there are businesses or startups that were pushing for those technology that a lot of the traditional businesses are saying, no, we, we don't want to do that. You can just cite COVID-19 Feb, you can just tell them February 2020 to April 2020 as an example of why you really need it right now. <laughs> very, ano, no? very compelling, very compelling reason to, mas to, nakaka- to adapt. To the, Actually, mas nakakatakot na yun, Sir Eric, kasi ngayon, ramdam mo. Parang pag binanggit mo palang Correct. COVID-19, matatakot na agad yung mga tao. Kinakabahan na, eh, no? <laughs> so, kapag ko, very yung, real to everyone, Correct, correct. So if you're one of those, I mean, everyone's affected. Eh. These are not one of those systems na parang it's just the rich people who got affected. If it's the a stock market crash, it's not like the something like if it's the lower of the pyramid people who's going to be affected because one factory closes down. No, this is a pandemic. This is a health crisis. Everyone is equal. So everyone would have that same feel of fear inside themselves that, this won't this doesn't have to happen to our company again i won't let this happen to our company again we we would have uh, we might uh, there is a possibility that our company would have been swept out of covid uh, by covid-19 that won't happen again and i might, might as well um invest on those kinds of investments right now the good thing about this sir eric sir jerry maidagdag ko lang agad is ngayon alam natin yung financial impact of closing down a factory if you are not prepared for something like this. Dati kasi lahat theoretical eh. Parang kasi imposible naman pong mag-shutdown yung factory namin. Imposible naman pong mag-shut, mag- tumigil ang ang jeep, tumigil ang LRT, MRT. Sino man naman mag-iisip po nun? Lahat yun theoretical, yung lahat ng numbers natin. Ngayon, daily, nasusunog yung pera na yun dahil hindi tayo nag-invest agad dun sa mga capacities that Industry 4.0 um, is giving us. So, malaking bagay po talaga. Malaking push to at mas malak feeling ko mas mapapabilis nito yung adaptability into digitalization. Yes. I totally agree. I yeah. Yung, yung isang... Sim- um, sige, sige, sir, Eric. Oh, I, I just said, I totally agree with the, the observation of uh, Sir Eric here, no? Just because uh, so many have been too, too busy planning something and uh, somehow making yourself uh, equipped and uh, relevant for a surprise like this, everything just became so in- insignificant. So everybody's grouping. Yes. Um, actually, it's is some of the discussions namin ng wife ko niyan, uh, Edward, about ano eh, um savings ba? So, for example, we're introducing uh, a technology ngayon na e-learning, okay? So, savings po pinag-uusapan natin dito or kaya loss avoidance, okay? Because for many for many, many companies, for example, those that are, who have not been able to to adapt, for example, to e-commerce, ngayon wala silang, wala silang deliveries, etc. Diba? So, savings po pinag-uusapan natin or loss avoidance? Because if you're not prepared uh, if you have not able to, let's say, prepare your company uh, and, and adapt, wala kang benta. Zero ang pinag-uusapan natin. Okay? So, hindi na siya loss, uh, hindi siya savings na, oh, magkano ba ito, Mag, magkano, uh, uh, mahal ba yan, etc. Pero ang pinag-uusapan natin, wala kang benta pag hindi mo to ginawa. So, pretty much like what you're saying, na these numbers become very real nowadays because they they feel it every day that they are not able to operate like every day that your uh, retail store is closed because you are not able to uh, do e-commerce okay. ganito kalaki ang nawawala sa iyo okay yung whole na benta mo wala so it makes the the comp- 
it makes the proposition on digitalization and and moving to e-commerce etc very very compelling for many businesses very good very good and okay uh grabe nine o'clock na <laughs> so ang dami uh, ang bilis ng oras uh yeah siguro we can yeah. <laughs> yeah, when you have the another list uh Edward yon let's uh, let's have it again. Um thank you, siguro, thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, you you want to say you know, something um siguro last few words tips and also invite them to check out if if you have uh some your your company etc. Sure. Uh thank you very much again uh uh Olern Live for having me on the show. Um just one thing for all startups out there, we can, we're going to be coming out of this. Um, this will end. Uh, you just have to believe that you still have a relevant product or service after this. Now, that being said, belief kasi has to do with the plans that you have. We have to be very real with ourselves. If tama ba yung atake natin with everything, with, with the current situation that we have. This is a different kind of Philippines. This is a different kind of uh, market that we're gonna be coming, uh, we're gonna be facing outside um, post COVID nineteen. Let's keep it real. Let's accept that fact, and then ibalik natin do sa kanilang kung mindset na sinasabi. Now you have to aspire. This would still be there's still some avenue that my product, my startup, will come out of this. The reason, um, the reason why I'm telling this is we need to support each other. Um, we need to su- we need to have as much startups as possible as uh, support as much as many startups as possible so that we can um, kick start our economy much faster we are the SMEs are the backbone of the industry and tayo tayo lang talaga yung magtutulungan dito um other than that um, um just follow me on facebook uh, facebook.com slash edward solicito search nyo lang po um, edward as s o l i c i t o Check nyo lang po ako kung meron pa po kayong mga tanong. And sa mga susunod na O-Learn, uh, sure ako na madali lang, madali lang po. Uh, Invitahin lang ako ni Sir Jerry at ni Sir Eric. Nandiyan na po agad ako. Thank you po, Sir, uh, sa O-Learn. Thank you, Sir Jerry. Thank you, Sir Eric. Thank you, Sir Edward. All right. <laughs> yeah, thank Good you so safe. much, Edward. Uh, I am sure yan, marami mga nagpapasalamat. I'm sure sa mga viewers natin, it's really a, a great, uh, what they call this, um, session wherein they have kasi may mga instances na yung mga kasama natin are not familiar with with the startups that you mentioned so it's good na you highlighted them ano yung mga ginagawa nila and why they are winning to give inspiration to to those who are watching us and sabi mo nga kanina uh, even the big companies can learn from these startups because the mga startups na to generally limited resources but somehow they are doing uh, s- s- something right that's why they are thriving during this uh, quarantine time so again thank you so much edward for sharing your insights sa uh, ating mga viewers yon um see you oh, yeah you. hope to have you again in in the future uh, episodes ng Uller live thank you what Yan, Sir Thank Eric. You. So, uh, um, yan ang discussion natin. It's a very big wake-up call, you know, especially for those who are uh, uh, watching us tonight who's, uh, you know, trying to adapt to this, uh, you know, migrating to digital. Uh, maganda yung mga inspiration pinakita ni Sir Edward. And uh, I think moving forward, most of what they heard tonight, they will, you know, they will process and uh, hopefully they come to a good realization. Yes, yes. Um, sabi ni Mark, thanks for this daw. Mas gusto ko na ipakalat ang digitalization. Been chatting with them na. Yeah, thanks, Oler. Yes. Welcome, Mark. And uh, Mary Ang, sinasabi niya, please get in touch with Deep Stains. They can learn from you. Um, I'm not sure, baka sa'yo to, Edward, uh, if you're young, uh, Check them out. Mary Ang is said uh, to get in touch with the Dibs team. Okay, yan. A uh, few more announcements lang before we go, Sir Eric. Um, I think you have, uh, yeah, you you want to s- announce again yung uh, gagawin natin na uh, playbook? 
Oh yes, uh, we'd like to invite everyone. No, uh, so Jay and I will uh, launch the uh, organizational development playbook for SMEs. This is like your uh, like your masters in organizational development for SMEs. Especially today, that uh, most companies uh, in the SME category will need help in terms of uh, putting the pieces back together. And uh, this series of courses and modules uh, will definitely be helpful to you. So we're looking at the timeline of uh, May, May 10th, Sir Jerry, tama ba? So, abangan niyo po, no, ang aming mga announcement. This will be very, very valuable. Uh, I'm not yet allowed to say the... Uh, itong, itong gagawin namin will also ano, uh, benefit uh, our uh, frontliners because uh, we agreed to uh, contribute and a lot of portion of it uh, to help those who are still out there uh, helping uh, the ones who are infected. You know? And uh, at the same time, for those who will participate, we, uh, we give this to you as something that you can help your organizations really bounce forward. Ayan. So, abangan nyo yan. We'll give more details uh, probably next week. So, on my end naman, gusto ko lang uh, i-promote din. Um, si Tarki is now available sa Union Bank Global Linker. So, if you're looking for ways to kumbaga, secure timekeeping sa mga employees nyo na, na tamper-proof, na yung date, time, photo, etc., uh, no need for internet because it works, uh, the, the app works offline. So you can check out the Tarki app. It's in uh, Union Bank Global Linker. We actually have, uh, we've set up fees worth yeah, 75000 for SMEs. Um, that's until May 15, 2020. So check that out. It's an autom uh, secure timekeeping uh, for your field uh, field and actually even office employees who are working from home. Yan. Tapos yung next one, uh, I'd like to mention that we'll be having the my little the little boss. Yan. Teach your kids the value of money and entrepreneurship. That's going to be May 9, 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Of course, with uh, Sir Paulo T. Big. He has run this multiple times and now uh, we're bringing it online para naman during this quarantine may pagkabisihan yung mga kids natin hindi lang puro gadgets at uh, yes. YouTube <laughs> Pangandang yes. session yan for, for those who are uh, at home now, no? mga bata mga Yes, mga so uh, just uh, go to www.olearn.com slash little boss or you can just comment here little boss and we'll send the details so that's May 9, Saturday, 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Um, we'll donate as well 300 pesos um, part of the proceeds ng, na, to, to, to our front, frontliners. Yan. Okay. Sige. So, yes, tapos na tayo. 16th episode ng ating O-Learn Live. So, maraming maraming salamat ulit sa inyo have been... Uh, and uh, following us and watching our sessions throughout these 16 days <laughs> na episodes natin. So, thank you so much and we wish you ano, a, a great weekend, uh, Saturday and Sunday. Sana pahinga tayo and then yun, we'll, we'll go back to, to work on uh, Monday. So, yan lang. Maraming maraming salamat ulit sa inyo. Have, uh, stay safe everyone and yan, good night. Bye bye. God bless. Good weekend, po. Bye bye. Thank you, Sir Jerry. Thank you, Sir Eric. All right.